At least five Palestinians are dead tonight after an Israeli helicopter fired missiles over the West Bank. The attack marked a rare use of Israeli air power over the territory. It came as Israeli military said troops came under fire during a raid. Seven Israeli soldiers and border police officers were wounded. During the clash, the Palestinian militants detonated a roadside bomb next to the Israeli military vehicles. It is just the latest in more than a year of violence in the West Bank. I'm joined now by Martin Indyk, former special envoy for Israeli-Palestinian negotiations during the Obama administration, as well as the former ambassador to Israel. Martin, good to see you. This is the first time Hi, since 2005 that Israeli forces have used helicopters to attack the West Bank. What's your reaction? The Palestinian authorities calling, calling it a dangerous escalation. Uh, well, it certainly is an escalation. Uh, what we've seen in the last six months is uh, the Israeli army going in, doing raids into the northern cities in the West Bank of Janine and Nablus, where the Palestinian Authority security forces no longer hold sway. And so the Israeli uh, army is moving in to arrest people who have been involved or they suspect they are planning uh, terrorist activities. Uh, and this has been going on back and forth for, as I said, six months. Something like 123 Palestinians have have uh, been killed in, in those operations, and 23 Israelis have been killed in terrorist attacks that emanate from those areas. So it's a it's like an ongoing uh, uh, war that's that's uh, rising in in costs, and now the involvement of helicopters shows that that the Palestinians are preparing uh, for the Israeli raids in a way that we haven't seen before, with with use of of explosives and and roadside bombs and and ambushes, mm. uh, and so uh, as a result, things things are, I think are, are certainly escalating. The raid comes just as the U.S. says it's deeply troubled by new plans to expand Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank, which is illegal under international law and something the U.S. has repeatedly warned Israel against doing. Why are they not listening? Well, this is a far-right government in Israel. Um, it's a coalition government that depends on its survival of these far-right ministers who represent the block of settlers. Uh, and uh, the settlers have a lot of lot of support within this government. And uh, they expect that there will be widespread settlement activity. Uh, the minister of one of these ministers, Batal al Smotrich, who's a member of the far right, uh, has uh, uh, now taken control of these decisions as a deputy minister in the, in the defence ministry, something that's never happened before. Mm. And so we've got a situation where it's kind of settlements gone wild, and you're absolutely right, Elizabeth, they're not listening to the opposition that is constantly expressed by the United States uh, in a situation where uh, their domestic politics is overriding any concern about their relationship with the United States. All this comes, of course, as there's news on the front page of the New York Times today of efforts underway to broker a deal to normalize relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. If, I mean, if this happens, this would be massive and historic. Is there any chance this may happen? Well, as that New York Times story put it, it's a long shot. It's a long shot, not because Saudi Arabia has any problem at this stage in normalizing relations with Israel. It's already taken steps towards that, for instance, Israeli civilian aircraft are flying over uh, Saudi Arabian airspace every day. But, but uh, to have a full-fledged normalization, in effect, peace between Israel and Saudi Arabia would be a big deal. So what's changed? Uh, what's and, driving this? Well, what's, what's driving it is Saudi greater confidence in wanting to play a regional role, common concern between Israel and Saudi Arabia of, of the threat from Iran, even though Saudi Arabia is in bed with Iran now in a kind of detente. They still fear what Iran can do, and they don't believe they can rely on the United States. So Israel is a, is, is a more reliable partner in, in that regard. And a, a sense that, that the Palestinian issue, which has held things up uh, in terms of normalization between Israel and Arab states, is something that they don't want to be uh, 
held down by. And, and as a result, there seems to be a willingness on the part of the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, and certainly Bibi Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, and now President Biden, to see if the three of them can find a way to achieve a breakthrough. But they won't be able to achieve that breakthrough unless they address the Palestinian issue and find a way to calm that down. Because for the Saudis, as leader of the Arab world and Muslim world, it's going to be very difficult for them to simply ignore the kind of violence that we've seen in, in the West Bank today. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.